In this video I'll show you how I built my garage roof behind us here, I'll show you how I constructed the roof, how I covered it with EPDM, and at the end of the video we'll take a look at a few of the improvements I've made since. I actually built this roof five years ago, so let's go back to see how we got on. Inside the garage, I just want to show you all the joists. Now with this, we use the OSB board, and the size of that was 4 by 8 foot. So what you need to do is work out the distance between your joists and ideally you want them about 40 centimetres not really any more than that that adds a bit of strength you also want the end line of your board to meet the centre of these joists so where the next one comes in you're able to screw both into the same joist and then work out an even spacing in between all your joists and so what we've done is we've used a 3x4 piece of timber all the way down there and that was a perfect length, 4.8 metres for the length of my garage. But what we've used is these bolts. Well, on here they're described as a through bolt. And they're a Fisher FXA 10x50 by 126. And on here it comes supplied with the Fisher ones with instructions on how to fit these. So you drill a hole using your masonry bit into the wall. You tap these bolts in. They're threaded and then you put a nut and a washer over the top and we've kind of sunk that hole. You should be able to see in there. And then you want to put your nails, so you've got one going in that way and one going down that way. And you want a minimum of two per timber. And then you do exactly the same on the other side. This wall plate we've put over there, which is the same piece of timber as we got on this side. We sit along the top of the wall. We use bolts again into the top of the brick wall. I think we used about five along the way and we also used a load of grip fill. It's actually called pink grip. Very much like grip fill, but I find this product a lot better and it's a few pence cheaper. It also doesn't harm to use this pink grip in other places where you feel you might want a little bit of extra addition as well as your nails. Right, before we start laying the rubber roof, we'll just show you the construction of the wooden roof underneath. So it's what we got on this roof, it's 5x2 joists. The board we've used is OSB3, 18mm. And then because we've got rough brick wall along the back, we've chipped the render off, and we've turned the OSB board up the back, and this will give us a nice smooth finish to attach the rubber up to. So we'll go along there, we'll curve up, we're going to put some sort of stop bead across there, which we'll screw in with some sealant and that'll create a nice sealed edge. But for extra precaution, I've ground a hole all the way along there through the cement line. And I'm going to put some lead flashing in there, which will eventually curve over the top and drain onto the rubber roof. All we've done with these boards along here, where we turn them up, is we've cut them to size. Obviously we've tapered the edge so the rubber can go up there nicely. Kept it lower than the line I'm going to put my lead in, obviously, because you don't want that covering the hole. And then behind there, we just use a masonry drill bit with plastic plugs. And then we've used a load of this pink grip behind the board to give it extra addition. And then we just screwed it up tight and squeezed this up. So that's going nowhere. The adhesive that you purchase as part of this roof kit bonds a lot better with this than it would rough old bricks. And there's obviously dust on there because it's an old house, which you'll never get rid of 100%. So it gives a much better bond with that. And if you can put the upstand, it's a lot better than just doing it against a brick wall. Not essential, but will give a better job and a nicer finish as well, because you'll have a nice smooth finish where it curves up and it should look nice and uniformed all the way around. Well, we've got this hole here. We've had to cut around that. And if you look around the back, we filled that in with a piece of wood. And we did that by putting a piece of batten on the back wall between two of the joists and then putting a piece of OSB board back on top in the shape of the soil pipe. So we can apply the rubber to that and we know we'll have a nice seal all the way around. And when we come to these corners, we've bought some rubber roof patching. So where you put the cuts, you put the patch over the top and stick that down and ensure you've got a nice tight seal. Now I've got coping stones on the top of this bit. So up here, we're going to terminate it with these termination bars and a bit of sealant, which we'll show you after. But the water should drain over the top of that. And eventually on this end, where we've got some bricks, we're going to bring the rubber up, we're going to use the termination bar across there, seal it down, and we'll put some coping stones over the top later. When you're applying these boards to the joist, it's always a good idea to see where the end of your joist is, on one end and the other, and just draw pencil lines along them, and that gives you a nice straight line to work your screws along 
when the boards are down if you can't see the joists. And then here you can see what I was telling you, underneath the roof is your joist runs along there. So you want to measure your joist so that the centres of your joist meet the edge of these boards. And that way then you can get two boards into one joist. In order to get the straight line for this edge here, we basically worked out the depth we need for our fascia board off the edge. We put a nail in this end, we did exactly the same at the other end in the right location and we ran a string right the way across then we're able to mark lines along each joist where this board needed to go to but make sure you set it to the right depth for the fascia that you've bought and we can show you all this in a minute so we're going to cut these joists off now but I'll show you underneath the roof where we put the nail in the end there and took the string line up and over you use a spirit level up that way and draw a straight line down so that when you cut your joist it's flat because your fascia board is going to attach straight to that so you want a nice straight line all the way along there and there we go there's one joist that's just come off there just using a handsaw so you can see the gap all the way along the front there now we'll have a fascia board on this we'll be putting some batten over the top to create a drip and then underneath we've got some plastic fittings that we bought that comes with a rubber roof kit. This will seal the rubber in tight to the fascia board and then off that we can put the gutter. And as you can see here, once you've got your, your straight line, you can then just run your saw along the edge of your OSB board and cut your joist off flush. Just using a hand saw. These are the screws we've been using to screw the OSB board down into the joist. Obviously you need to use a screw that's suitable to go through the depth of your wood and into your joist. But these are excellent wood screws, you get these from Screwfix. Very I'm reasonable going. price. <laughs> Why? Why do that? You can see here now we've applied the batten along the front of the joist. And to give you a closer look, it's all we've done is drilled a hole through these battens and nailed straight into the joist. Just like that. And this gives a big enough overhang now so that when we put our rubber over it, it'll drip down into the gutter and not fall short of the gutter. And we've just done that all the way along before applying the fascia board, which we'll do next. Right, now before you lay your rubber down, you need to make sure that the roof is all swept nice and clean and then run a hover over the top so there's no dust or debris on it. Then you need to get your rubber just like this, lay it out and let it settle across your roof before folding it back halfway ready to apply the adhesive to your board. Right, so all you have to do is just brush the rubber out to get rid of the creases before letting it settle. So you want to roll your rubber out like that so it's flat all over the roof and in the place you want it. And then we're now going to roll back from that side to halfway. We can then apply the adhesive roll it back on using a brush and stick it down and do the same for the other side. I'll just quickly show you what we're using. This is contact adhesive for EPDM and you use this around the very edge of your roof and then you use this which we roll it on and this is um, decking adhesive and this goes all over the wood and does the main core of the rubber roof and you'll see us do this in a minute. And we've got a range of sealants that we're going to use which is like mastic put around the edge just a standard roller to apply the rubber and then we got this for doing the small edges that's a small roller basic things knife pair of scissors and all this came as part of the kit from the manufacturers that supplied the gear to us all right all you want to do is pour out your adhesive onto the wood like that in piles and then get your roller and just roll it on just like that and do that over half of your roof We've got the other bit of rubber rolled back over that side of the roof. When you apply the adhesive, just do it so it's slightly transparent. You don't want it too thick. And bear in mind, if it's a hot day, it'll go off quicker than if it's a cold day. But you've got a few minutes to play with it. We'll only apply this to the, to the top of the roof. And then we'll apply the contact adhesive, which is a more powerful adhesive to the upstands once this roof is down and then we can do that at the end. Right so the roof is almost covered you can see we've actually done more than half of the roof it's about three quarters but as long as you've got room to get 
back off without walking over the adhesive and then we'll roll this rubber from each end in and firm it down. Once you've rolled your rubber roof out, use a large brush like that one and just brush over your rubber, getting rid of any lines and brush from the centre outwards. And then use a roller like this one here and go over any little lumps and bumps or dimples. Now on our roof, we're going to work on the back next and the sides and then we'll apply all the adhesive to the front at the end. We're just applying the contact adhesive to the upstand. And to the back of the membrane. And to the back of the membrane, yeah. With the contact adhesive, you should always apply both sides that need to be stuck together because it creates better adhesion when you come to stick the two. Yeah, it hasn't got to be too accurate, it's uh, more a case to get it on before, especially working in the heat today. We just want to get it on as quick as we can. Right, so what we've done is we've turned this rubber up bit by bit and applied the rubber to the wall using the contact adhesive. Now you have to make sure you get in tight here with your fingers first and then roll it up the wall because this stuff sets really quick, especially in hot weather like this. And as what we've done is over our tapered edge, we've just cut this rubber down to size once it was up here, stuck it down, and then we're going to put our long bar across here in a minute and screw it in tight. And then I'm going to go over the top with a nice lead flashing out of this groove I put down here with an angle grinder, and that's going to make sure we get a good watertight seal all the way down and drop any moisture from the top of the wall over the rubber and then down the slope of the roof into my gutter. On these corners, you have to make a few cuts because I've got a raised bit here. So we'll do a slit in there in a minute, overlap them. Around this soil pipe, we've just cut it round in a circle shape. And then there's a gap at the back. And again, we we'll use contact adhesive to stick this up and any exposed woods or any cuts in the rubber will go over again with a rubber patch material that we've got. Right, we've rolled the whole roof on. Because what we've done when we've turned this up is we've put this metal bar along here is part of a roofing kit and then you just screw through that and we've put a bead of sealant all the way across behind these so that when we screw it up it fills any holes created by the screws then don't forget still I'm having this lead coming over there and covering the lot of this so that'll all be fine we've done exactly the same along the back underneath this overhang over the edge here we've got to make a cut across the rubber that way and then this flap underneath goes underneath and this one falls over, so any water drains that way. Then the same over here. If you have a look, the way we've cut it is so that that comes up, and then this flap on the left will now sail over the side, and then any water running down will run over the edge. And all over the end, we use the contact adhesive all the way across it, and that creates a good bond right into the front of the roof. If we look along the length of here then, we've used this stuff here. And what this is, is like an edging strip that you put over the battens, and then we'll roll the rubber over this plastic here, and that'll sit in there, and then there's another piece of plastic that fits over this perfectly with a little seal, and then we nail that into this piece, and then the rubber will be trapped between it, and you'll have a lovely finish where all the water will run off into our gutter. And if you have a look here, these are like strips of material that you can buy, and you have to add them on with a primer. So you paint the primer on, stick these on, and what I did was cut them into circles, which is best recommended, because they're easier to move into shape. And then you put it on, stick it in, and you can work this, and you can really, you can see with that, where I've just put it on, you get the rubber and you just pull it tight with your finger and all this will start to stretch very much like fixing a puncture on an inner tube because all this material is very similar and then with this primer it basically bonds it to the pipe and bonds it to the rest of the rubber and that stops the leak so I've done four of these all around the hole and if you look at the back I've done a vertical strip down there where there was our join in the cut that we had to do to get it around this pipe and that I did last, so that runs, as you can see, on top of these other ones. Well, we've done the corner here. You can see how we cut this corner piece. We did it like flaps. So we did this cut across here. It's actually in that direction at the rubber. And then when you turn it that way, sit that one 
over this one so any water running down there runs onto the piece underneath. We then got across the top by here with a load of sealant just to fill in the gap and that's really strong sealant and it matches the rubber but you can do whatever you want there really I mean you can terminate it at a bar would be absolutely fine but we left a bit of rubber above it put the sealant over and job done then the overhang of this you should never get water on there anyway and on these corners I haven't finished this one yet so you can see what we've done done some cuts and folded a flap of rubber over there we've got this piece I showed you earlier which we've now secured over the rubber I'm going to do a return piece of this over the rubber back to the wall and our fascia board we've cut to size so that sits directly up underneath our battens if you look under there we folded the rubber back underneath the fascia board so any water although it should run over there into the gutter if it does get underneath it'll run down the rubber and none of this will ever get wet so we're back to the future there's just a few things i want to show you so if you look at the corner of the roof here, I never got round to putting the end trim on. It was one of those things, it never leaked, it's never caused me a problem. So I moved on to the next job and forgot about it. So maybe one of those things I need to add to my ever-growing list of things to do. Another thing you'll notice is now being rendered with a new window and a coat of paint. And there's the lead flashing, which I did months later. And you can see how I actually rendered up to the lead flashing to tie it in neatly. And all the wall has now been painted. You may remember in the video, we cut this EPDM to a tight circle around this soil pipe. And something you could do is leave it slightly smaller and then just turn it up on the inside. The only reason we didn't do this is we found that it was folding over itself on here, which meant you couldn't fix these pads nice and tight to the soil pipe. And the way we did it has worked perfectly. And this has never given me any problems over the five years that it's been in place. On the rear of the roof, I bedded some coping stones on mortar across the top to give a nice overhang. And then finally, you'll notice this slightly rough lead fashion tucked underneath these front coping stones. And the reason for that is I actually had a slight weep only a few months ago that was going through and trickling onto the roof. I ground a slot underneath those coping stones. I used some old lead flashing from my loft conversion, cut it down to size and tucked it underneath the coping stones and bedded it in with a nice bead of sealant. I did that lead work as a bit of a quick fix before Storm Dennis came. So my plan is, in time, to remove the coping stones. I'm going to put a big piece of lead up over the top and back down. And then I'm going to bed the coping stones back along the top. And that'll make sure that no water can ingress through any of the brickwork or down through the coping stones. So that'll be one for another video, so watch this space. So there it is, five years later. I can really do with a bit of a wash, but still going strong. And if you enjoyed this video, then please subscribe and press the bell icon for regular notifications. I've been pouncing around the house. Ta-ta, farewell.